Hey everyone, this is Mike Rival. I'm one of the branch managers with Realty Advantage. Uh, we're excited to have you with us today. This video is intended for home buyers out there. If you're thinking of buying in this spring 2023 market, I'm excited to have Paul Pikosh with us. He's a mortgage expert. Yes, hi, I'm Paul Pikosh with Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. Uh, we go by the initials PRMG. Uh, I've been in the business for quite a while, over 25 years. And I've seen all kinds of markets up and down. So experience matters. And I look forward to sharing some of the information that we have for you today. Yeah, before we get started, I just want to chat a little bit. Obviously, I've been doing this uh, a while myself. i um, been licensed about 28 years now. Um, so we, we, we do quite a bit of business in, in multiple states. And uh, this information out today is, is for those of you thinking of buying. So these are three basic questions that I usually put out there as you enter that home buying journey is just make sure that it's the right fit for you uh, as far as renting versus owning. Um, you know, it's a long-term purchase. Uh, if you're, if you're going to be in the property long-term, it's always a great time to, to buy real estate. Um, make sure you're you know, financially stable and that you have your finances in order. Uh, Paul's a great resource for, for helping you out and getting you pre-approved up front. Um, we're going to cover four topics today. Inventory, interest rates, inflation, and home prices. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Paul and I have put together probably 10 different training videos. They're usually for realtors, uh, but we really thought it'd be a great idea to put one together for home buyers. Um, you can really know what's happening in your local market and hopefully it'll help you in your, in your, uh, in your purchase process there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're here for you, but again, we've got, um, some great topics today. The first one is inventory. Everything's driven by supply and demand of housing out there. So, uh, you know, you hear about inventory going up and down and interest rates changing and you know, when is a good time to buy but again, the prices themselves and the, and, the, and the inventory is really driven by supply and demand. Um, and these, these, uh, a lot of these slides have come from Paul, so I really appreciate uh, you putting those together for us. Uh, Paul, you wanna talk a little bit about this one? Yeah, one of the things that has to do with uh, inventory um, is vacancy rates. And this chart highlights um, a little bit of a history of what that is over the past several, uh, geez, couple decades, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when in inventory and vacancy rates are really low, uh, that, that makes uh, it more of a, a, a seller's market. So that's why the prices are, are, are healthy and high right now. Mike could talk a little bit more. Um, yeah, so for those of you weighing your options with renting versus buying, there's not many rentals available. Um, when we go to inventory of homes for sale. Uh, I refer to this chart all the time. And the blue line shows the average number of homes for sale in the United States over time. Uh, this chart goes back to 1983. Average is two and a half million homes for sale. The highest on record for that period of time was right before the financial crisis. So 3.7 million homes for sale back in 07. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the, the bottom right there. Uh, the current inventory of 870,000. Uh, we put this, this is a slide from a presentation Paul and I did about uh, seven months ago. So we'll, we'll show you some, in, some, some updated numbers there. But as you can see, uh, over time, uh, inventory is the lowest that it's been. So that's part of what's driving the, the pricing today too. This is an updated uh, slide Paul sent over. Again, 2023, it's showing 980,000 homes for sale. You'll see headlines, oh, inventory spikes 15%, number of homes up for sale. But if you look historically, it's down so much from years past. We're really having a housing shortage at this point. Also that 980,000 is, is somewhat misleading because of the number of houses that are under contract. So that number is just saying, hey, how many houses are for sale in the United States? 980,000. That's already almost near a four decade low. Uh, despite the fact that population grows in the United States every single day. The problem is half those houses almost are under contract, so you can't even purchase those. So the real inventory out there is about 578,000. Uh, the reason we're showing you guys these numbers is we want you to have a firm understanding of what's really going on in the real estate market so you can make educated decisions when, when you're buying. 
this just shows uh again we had a, a a run in on interest rates last year as the the Fed was you know combating inflation uh, post COVID. You can see there was an uptick in inventory, but it's headed right back down where it was. So it was short lived. I, I want to say you know the the peak of the inventory, even though it's still record low, was um, you know probably about five months ago or so. Um, so inventory is pretty tight. So you know there's still homes for sale out there, but want to make sure you keep that in perspective as you're as you're shopping for homes out there. Uh, next thing that uh, we'll cover is interest rates. It's obviously been the number one topic by far in the past, you know, 10 months or so, if not more. So I'll uh, turn it over to Paul on this one. Um, this is a great chart here. It kind of shows historically what rates have done. Yeah, this is an interesting chart. It goes all the way back to 1972. Uh, it highlights the, the early 80s and the spike of interest rates then um, over 17.5%. Uh, and then from there on, it's been a slow downward, you know, trickle into the today's market. So when people say, oh, my gosh, rates are so high. Well, in perspective, they're still low um, compared to they were during the pandemic. Yeah, they are high. We might not see those record lows again. Right now, we're fighting inflation, and that's why the rates are higher than where they are now. But uh, this is a good chart that, that highlights the history of the interest rates and, and puts it in perspective, into yeah. better perspective. I think it's important too to highlight there. Those are those are recessions that you're seeing on on the chart as well. Um, and again, historically, rates are still um, still low. So this is a great opportunity, and uh, we just want to make sure that people are putting those in perspective as well. Like just like Paul had mentioned, not comparing it to the to the to the COVID levels of, of rates. Also, want to chat a little bit about inflation. Uh, that's also been the the talk of the day and what's been driving rates. Uh, Paul's an expert on inflation, so um, if you want to dive in deep on this stuff, we'll do a broad stroke today. Uh, I would encourage you to reach out to him. Uh, he, he really knows this in and out. Yeah, you, you're going to hear in the media a lot of talk about inflation um, because. Well, it's a big part of what's going on. And inflation is the number one uh, thing that the Federal Reserve is fighting right now. And that's their charter is to really manage and fight inflation. And when they want to fight it, they will. They have a lot of tools at their disposal, including the interest rate hikes that they that they do. Um, but this this chart here shows, you know, inflation over the past couple of years, maybe a year or two, and that it is coming down. And the Fed is very good at that, and they will manage it accordingly. And also keep in mind, when you hear, well, so first off, May 10th is coming up soon now on Wednesday, and that's your, there's going to be an announcement of what that is, the CPI, um, the core, and the headline numbers are. Um, that All that information is just something to pay attention to while you're buying the house. So if inflation does start to come down, interest rates should follow suit. One of the the big factors of calculating the core CPI, consumer price index, which is a measure of inflation, is shelter cost. I'm not going to get in the weeds too much about it, but just know that it's a lagging indicator and it takes a few months for those numbers really to hit by averages into the, the numbers that they're going to be announcing over the next months for the CPI. Um, so, you know, what, what, what happened a few months ago is just now starting to, to be factored into the numbers for this. So over the next few months, I'm, I'm predicting a, a slight drop in rates, not, not big, but, you know, you might, might see a little bit of relief. However, it's still a good time to, to buy in this market. We'll get into some more slides and, and, and talk about that and why that is in a, in a second. Yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, if anyone has any specific questions as far as uh, you know CPI, I know we've got a big report coming out this week, which is one of the reasons that Paul wanted to time this video for that. It's coming out on Wednesday, I think, for CPI. Uh, if you want to get really into the details, uh, you know, contact Paul directly. Um, the next topic we're going to cover is prices. Um, again, there's been a lot of misinformation about what's going on in the market out there. Uh, we did it. We did a video on prices, this is back in May, and we had said, hey, we might see a two to 5% dip, but you know, within a year, we'll be right back. And it's exactly what's happening. So um, you know, we encourage you to really, if, if you wanna you know, review this information, um, there's a lot of good stuff in here. As far as home prices, this, this chart here goes back a little past 1970. 
the gray lines are also, as I indicated on the other slide, recessions. But you can see over the long term what home prices do. So there's it's just an amazing, um, you know, real estate appreciation over the long term is absolutely fantastic. Um, and we're still seeing that now. Prices are creeping back up. But it's important that you watch your real estate values at the local level. That's why it's very important to work with a local agent. Um, I know, you know, Realty Advantage is a full service brokerage. We've got 155 agents in, in four states. So uh, again, work with a local professional that, that knows your local market. These are your state um, costs as far as the cost of housing, cost of homes. Um, they're all over the place. As you can see, you, know, you find your state there if you can see those. Um, Again, that's why when you read a lot of these national stats or you'll hear a report come from a from a, a state that's you know 3,000 miles away from where, where you're thinking of buying, uh, take it for a grain of salt. You really need to know what's happening at the local level. Um, this next report here is just from one of our local markets that we serve. Uh, we do a lot of business in the mid-Atlantic. We also do business in Florida. But uh, what this shows here is just if you just look at that, you know, the top left there in the green, it says closed sales. Uh, the five-year average is, you know, just shy of 16,000 sales for the month. And this past February, there was 13,000. So you'll see a headline, you know, you know home sales plummet 15, 20% in February. But if you look at the number of homes for sale, um, it's mirroring that. So there's just, there's just not as many homes for sale as there used to be. What's out there is selling very quickly. So again, these are the kind of statistics you want to know as you're shopping for a home and, and when you're preparing an offer. Uh, we had a lot of folks even back in November where we're thinking, hey, you know, home prices are going to be way down 20, 30 percent in the springtime. Interest rates will be back down. Um, you know, I, it's 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 a challenge because now, you know, the prices have gone up and those neighborhoods are looking for significantly Um you know, way more so than they would have saved as far as the interest rates. And that's one thing we just want to kind of drive home is you make sure you work hand in hand with your lending professional and also your local real estate professional. Uh, it's always a good time to buy if you're making a long-term purchase. Uh, you don't want to be trying to time the market, time interest rates. Uh, it, it's impossible, as, as, as Paul Paul can <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. highlight. And they say, you know, try, trying to, it's like catching a falling knife. It's pretty impossible and you, you, you might get hurt along the way. Um, a, a good strategy is, is to, to buy when you're ready. And, you know, in, in, in hindsight, this graph will show that it's probably a better idea to buy right before the bottom, just because of there's less competition for the, the, the low amount of inventory that's on the market now. So would you want to buy a house when there's four offers or would you want to buy a, a house when there's 24 offers? And, and if interest rates do drop somewhat, um, you're probably going to be faced in a market where there's a lot more people trying to buy that particular house because inventory seems to be staying low for the foreseeable future. So, uh, you know, now is a, a really good time to buy. Yeah, I would agree. And you don't, you're not going to time it perfectly. You really want to make that decision. If you, if you find a home that you think is perfect for your family, it's within your budget. Um, you know, make, make the move now, uh, make your offer. Uh, this, this, this is a great chart. It just kind of highlights, uh, again, more of the actual costs of waiting. You don't want to be timing your purchase based on interest rates. Uh, we've already demonstrated what inventory is doing. Uh, we're not anticipating any increase in, you know, significant increase in inventory at all. So, uh, you know, my based on my 27 years of experience, I think prices will continue to trickle up. And if rates do come down, if you if you find the home of your dreams, you, you buy this month, uh, you can always refinance later. So just reach out to your lending professional or give Paul a call. He can kind of walk you through that. And this, this chart just kind of demonstrates that, um, you know, the, the difference in payments and, and rates. Um, just want to close on a couple of things too. Again, as we mentioned, it's a great time to buy. Uh, we're here to answer any questions you have whatsoever. Just want to leave you with six kind of simple tips. Uh, first and foremost is get pre-approved. Uh, reach out to Paul. Uh, Get, get, uh, get your finances in order before you start looking at homes. There's nothing more frustrating than getting out there and finding that you know, house of your dreams and then finding out that the financing is not going to work. So knock that out up front. Very easy. You can do it all over the phone, online. Uh, take care of that first. You're going to save yourself a lot of, lot of frustration. Uh, set realistic expectations that are within your budget. You want to leave a little bit of room, especially if you find that house that's got multiple offers. 
uh, you may need to go a little bit over your ask or what originally you were in, you were thinking of. So make sure you're pre-approved for an amount uh, beyond that. Um, I'm going to add one thing real real quick, Mike, yeah. to that. Um, and be get find a lender that has experience, especially working with, if you're a first-time buyer, experience working with the first-time buyers. There's a lot of specific programs that are out there available to you that not all lenders are going to know about. So uh, finding, finding a lender that knows all the niche programs and all the closing cost assistance that might be available to you when you buy in a particular county or city or state, uh, that's very important. I, I happen to know some of those niche programs and I'm helping currently some, some clients get some assistance that don't have quite enough money saved up to buy, but they're still, everything else has been go doing well for them. And they would rather buy now and, and not have to fight with uh, a lot of offers when the markets do change. So mm -hmm. find a lender that's, that knows all those niche programs for you. Uh, Paul, if you want to you know, speak very quickly about the, was it Anne Arundel, the, the program? Yeah, I found a, 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 a closing cost assistance program in Anne Arundel County where somebody can get up to $40,000 um, uh, to help them buy their, their down payment for the, for the house. So I'll be happy to talk about your individual situation. There are things out there for you. Um, th there was a survey done recently that surveyed first-time home buyers, and it was a significant percentage of them believe that they needed at least 20% down to buy a house. And that's simply not true. There's many programs that don't require that. Um, and, and most people, the first time, they don't have that money saved up. And there's FHA programs, there's conventional programs that are as little as 3% down to, to buy a home. And if you're a little short on closing costs, there's some state and local programs that can kick in and kind of help you with that. So um, by all means, uh, call me, use me for that information. I'm happy to share it with you. Yeah, there's a few more points here. Um, again, with with the limited inventory, you got to get creative. Uh, this is where you want to make sure you're 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 working with a aggressive agent uh, who who knows the local market, who's going to really beat the bushes out there to to find property for you. Uh, again, as I mentioned, um, you know we've got over 150 agents that uh, you know do just that. So again, you got to get creative. You're working as far as like finding off market properties, uh, you know, networking with neighbors, coworkers, friends. Um, you know, and just kind of sum it all up. Um, when you find your home, you gotta you gotta act quickly. Uh, by all means, uh, if it's not the right fit, don't do it. This is a long term purchase. Um, you know, buying a home is not you're not buying a TV here. You gotta, um, you know, it's got to be the right one. But when you find the right one, you do need to move very very quickly. I hear it all the time. Frustrated buyers still talking about the house they lost six months ago. It's never coming. Forget about it. You got to move on. But um, you know, one of the, a big key to that is, is make sure you authorize your lender. So if Paul's doing a loan for you, you got to give them authorization to speak to listing agents, any good listing agent out there, if they're getting multiple offers, they're going to call those buyers lender. They're going to want to know, Hey, what kind of documentation do you have? You know, what's the credit score? Are, are they a strong buyer? Um, so again, you get pre-approved up front. Uh, make sure you, you, you know, Paul's an amazing resource as far as his experience in the program. So um, again, we're here to to help in any way we can. Hopefully you guys had some value out of that. We'll be putting together, um, you know, more information uh, videos in the future. Uh, feel free to reach out to us directly. Uh, Paul, you want to close out? What's the best way for them to reach you? Um, uh, Email is great. And my cell is, is always on and available. Feel free to call or text the number there, 301-351-9883. And I look forward to talking to anybody about buying a home. Sounds good. We appreciate your time today and uh, take care.